and on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shave an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie the fleece, and strain the milk. Somebody who'd bale a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would laugh, and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. Who's picking up my piglet? I think we've got to remember there's a culture there of supermarkets, isn't there? And things are there readily labelled and packaged in any form from any month of the year from all over the world. And what I'm trying to bring back is that direct link between growing something and then cooking it and eating it. Uh, you good? Uh, uh. I've developed it into what I like to call the outdoor classroom uh, and we've turned the farm here and gardens into a, a whole school resource so it's, it's really impacting on every subject in the curriculum. Well this is the perfect way to learn where milk comes from and we're going to show you really the routine that we go through in milking hair and it's really about how we keep that milk as clean as possible because all around us in this atmosphere are bacteria, or you may have heard them called microbes in science. And um, why is it so important to get to stop the microbes getting up the teeth? Right, if they get up into the udder itself, they can start to attack what we call alveoli, which actually produce the milk. The irony is, for us, it takes about four minutes to milk the cow and about 24 minutes to clean the machine afterwards. I thought it was quite interesting because I didn't realise how many times um, they were milked during the day and I didn't realise um, like how the, the whole process of how you actually did it, I thought you just uh, did it by hand. The greatest strength I think is, is developing people's confidence and, and self-esteem and it's this vocational learning, working as a team, being aware of safety, being able to communicate with people around you. I think that's the important things for people in their future lives. We try and produce, we produce a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables, and wherever possible that goes into the school. It tastes so much better if you've grown it and then you've cooked it. I think it's fantastic. Boats and boats and waterfalls, alleyways and pay phone calls. I've been everywhere with you. That's true. Do you remember that day you 
fell out of my window. I saw a three came jumping out after me. Well, you fell on the concrete and nearly broke your ass, and you were bleeding all over the place, and I rushed you out to the hospital. You remember that? Yes, I do. Well, it's something I never told you. 